Hi, today we're after crested tits. We're up in Scotland in the Caledonian pine forests. They're very numerous around here. You can hear them, it's a very distinctive call. And they're coming in to some feeders. So we've got some peanut feeders out for them. A couple of very simple perches here with these clamps to hold the branches in place. I always like to go with a very simple shot first, just on a plain branch. And then you try and do something a bit more artistic after that bit more attractive but a nice simple clean cut pictures what I always want first and it's all going well apart from the weather it's raining and it's dull and it's miserable and I'm having to shoot at very high ISOs which is less of a problem today but still you prefer a bit of light at the same time you don't want it sunny because then it's contrasty in these forest conditions you really want cloudy bright the idea of starting off with a very simple shot on a plain branch harks back to the days when I used to be able to make a living at this and one of my many theories on the subject was the best selling pictures were the very simple sideways on razor sharp fully lit portraits. These were the shots that were sold 20 or 30 times and bring the money in. And then I took it a stage further and I started cutting them out so they had a plain background. At one point I had a batch of a thousand done and I paid someone else to do that, it was too time consuming for me. And I remember I monitored it for the first few months and after three months I'd got my money back and presumably since then they made me a considerable profit. So here are the crested tits, they never perch for very long, it's just there for a split second but long enough to get a picture at about five hundredth of a second. So we have a, a few pictures on those perches I put up. Now we're going to go for a more natural perch. So this tree, very short little pine tree. Hopefully they're going to land on the green stuff and also on these dead ones here. So I'm just going to hang the peanut feeder to the side of it. They will very, very quickly discover this. So it'll take them 10 seconds and I move from where we were previously to here. As well as the crested tits, there's lots of blue tits and great tits around and masses of coal tits. This is really coal tit habitat. This is a coal tit. Looks very similar to the crested tit at first. The rain has slowed down just a touch, which is a good thing because my trousers were getting very soggy. This jacket's very waterproof, but the trousers aren't and it's cold as well and when you're trying to put the poles to hold the feeders in the ground you think the ground is very soft because the the first half an inch is very spongy but then underneath that it's it's really frozen anyway this is working but they're not landing quite where i want them and if anything they're coming in from the right hand side so they're coming into the feeder first rather than to the perches that where i want them to land so i either got to put the the feeder on this side of the perch or maybe right in the middle of the perch I might try that exactly where you put a perch is just experimenting and instinct as to where you think it might work best try it like that see what happens I didn't do much video on the day there wasn't really the opportunity and I find I have to make my mind up am I going to take stills pictures or video I find it very difficult to do both so this was a stills picture day on the whole very rarely got above 500th of a second it was too dull and that was with 5,000 or 8,000 ISO I like the look of this one because it's very very open, I've got lots of branches going out both sides of the main stem and I can imagine this working quite well so I'll give this a quick run I've given up trying to put that metal pole into the ground the ground is just too frozen so now I'm using my second tripod to support the peanut feeder that's the tripod that I would normally have the camera that I'm filming myself when I'm talking to camera so now I'm using the GoPro 
and the crested tit, as you can see, is hopping about in front of me. They're extremely confiding. One other short bit of video in slow motion of the coltits having a bit of a tiff. And then a few stills of coltits. This was definitely the best pine tree that I chose because it was open and you could see the branches but at the same time a bit of greenery around it. This picture I didn't like because the bird's legs are hidden behind the twig and as it's sitting there I'm saying please just hop forward, hop forward from there, just one short hop, which it did. Now we can see the legs. I like it when the bird's crest is up as well, it's a crested tit so you want it with a crest. And don't forget to take the verticals, something else that I always used to do in the days I made a living at it, you wanted horizontal shots and vertical shots. These are far more natural looking perches than I started off with. And I tend to pick on the perches that I want the bird to land on and then wait there until the bird lands right on the top of the pine tree. It's a nice clean background. I don't really want the bird facing towards me. I prefer to have it sideways on. But the crest is up, but the bird's head is turned slightly away from me. Just wait a fraction of a second, it turns its head slightly to the right. And that's the sort of picture that I'm after and do a few verticals, just to be certain. Chimping is a new word that came into photography when we swapped to digital, meaning to review your pictures on the back of the camera as quickly as possible. And it's got its disadvantages, because sometimes while you're doing that, you miss a picture. But I'm a great chimper. I'm always reviewing the pictures on the back of my camera. Digital photography has many advantages. But the biggest single advantage of all is that ability to see your pictures as soon as you've taken them. Instead of having to wait a fortnight for your films to come back to the post, to be able to see your pictures immediately means the learning curve is so much faster. And it's something I'm always very enthusiastic about doing. Let's look at some of the settings I was using on the day. It was the Sony A1, the 200-600mm lens. It was wide open all the time. The light was very dull. Typical shutter speed was 500th of a second. It never varied much away from that. And the ISO was either 5000 or 8000 ISO. There's not much difference between the two. It's two thirds of a stop. But notice the picture is pretty noiseless for 5000 ISO. And in recent weeks I've showed YouTube films where I've been shooting at 20,000 ISO or 25,600 ISO and how remarkably good the quality is. I've also mentioned the RAW processor that I've been using to do this, which is D times O Pure RAW. Now if you haven't tried D times O Pure RAW yet, I'd really recommend after watching this video, go and download it and give it a quick go. Now I can think of three reasons why you might not want to do that. And the first one is the only valid one, you do not shoot RAW. But this might be a good opportunity to try shooting RAW and see just how good it can be with this RAW processor. But the second reason would be it's going to cost you money. Well it doesn't. It's available as most computer software is as a free trial download. You can use it I think for 30 days. The third reason is it's too much trouble. You've got to start understanding a new bit of software. You've got to work out how to use it. You've got to read the manual, watch a few YouTube tutorials. You don't. This software is so easy to use. There's really hardly any settings. Intuitive isn't a suitable word. It's far easier than that. So when you run the software, you get this very simple screen. You've got the button that says add photos to process. You click on that. And from there you select the pictures you're interested in. Well, I'm selecting 49 raw files here. Add photos. It puts the thumbnails in. And then you hit the process photos button. You then get this very simple box comes up with a few settings. The first one, the method. I've only ever used Deep Prime, the right hand one. If you press the question mark next to Deep Prime, it will tell you what the other two options do, but I've never used them. It's telling us it's going to take 23 minutes. This is the latest version, 1.5, and they have added these two options. I've only had this for 24 hours, I haven't changed those. Just leave them at default. Then we come down to the output format. 
Do you want to output as a JPEG or as an Adobe DNG file? Well, I use Adobe DNG files. And then finally, where do you want it to put the output? Which folder do you want your new pictures to go into? You then press the process button and just let it run. I now run all of my files through this raw processor, not just the high ISO ones, the low ISOs too. And it just does a wonderful job very automatically. The only thing I don't like about this software is it renames your files. I go to a lot of trouble to batch rename my pictures, so I might end up with Bluetit M1868. But when it converts it to a JPEG or DNG, it adds this long string, ARWD times O, deep prime. I don't want all that. It means I've got to batch rename them again afterwards. I wish they'd give you the option to turn that off. I want to keep the same file name. It's the simplicity of this software that I really like. I've got Topaz Denoise and Topaz Sharpen. You run these afterwards and there's lots of options, lots of sliders, lots of experimenting to do to get the best result. With D times O pure raw, you just run it and just leave it to it. All of these pictures were taken at Neil McIntyre's site, not far from Aviemore, and he can help you out with other Scottish species too. I'll put his website in the description as well as on this screen. Thanks for watching.